hi i consider myself blessed you want to know why let me tell you something that happened this week it was monday and i was preparing the schedule for the week my work schedule i had whatsapp classes on monday and friday i had to prepare my video lessons and then i get a call from the principal of the school he wanted me to make a powerpoint presentation of a school project he wanted me to present that ppt on friday so i had the staff meeting on friday i had a whatsapp class on friday and i had another whatsapp class on monday and i had to make my video lessons i was totally confused i didn't know what to do where to start what to do first how to do okay just then one of my students texted me to clarify some doubt okay so i tried to excuse myself saying that i'll explain it to you later i'm kind of busy right now so he sweetly asked me ma'am can i help you in any way and I, then it struck me yes i can get help why shouldn't i so i told him this is what is happening i uh, i have so many things on my plate can you help me you know how students are much uh, better than teachers in all these tech stuff so i thought it would be good to get the ppt done by him so i asked him can you do a can you make a powerpoint presentation for me he said yes of course my pleasure i got my ppt done by my student and it turned out really well and i got few of my friends to help me out with our next lesson as well watch the videos hello everyone hope you're having a really nice day hope you all are safe and sound at home so here i am to talk a little about what i believe and why i believe in sharing um how important sharing is um i personally believe sharing is very important um because it actually gives you a better perspective and absolutely helps you in finding a better solution which you might not be able to reach out to um sharing actually um makes you feel less alone uh, and especially during this pandemic time it's very very important because our emotions are all over the place our mind is cluttered we are frustrated we're emotional so it's very important to share with somebody how you feel because they always make you feel lighter just talking to someone actually brings a lot of weight off you so i personally believe you should share and also i believe um our inner self is very very uh, complex and uh, when we are in the emotional state or any form of um, uh, problems we have uh, we become very vulnerable we become very anxious and our decision making becomes very um, emotional so it's very good to share with people um, so you get a better perspective and your mind is a lot more clear when you make a decision so i always tell everybody to share your problems that so it's important so keep sharing and talk to people who you comfortable with that's very important who is willing to listen to you and who understands how you feel and who gets you so um i'm here for you all if anyone wants to share um you take care all of you take care of yourself and stay safe bye hello everyone my name is gunjeet and i am an educator i would like to share a little about what friendship means to me my friends are uh, literally my comfort zone and even though they are my comfort zone uh, they push me to be the best version of myself it's like a forum where i can literally be myself without uh, being judged at all and uh, for me what's most important is that i share everything that is important to me uh, in my life with them and uh, this gives me an opportunity to listen to their perspectives about whatever problem i have uh whatever issue i'm facing whatever makes me happy so these perspectives uh, give me a you know a sense of clarity which i would not have had otherwise also they uh, when i said they push me to be the best version of myself i mean that they see uh, this potential in me this spark in me that sometimes even i fail to see in myself 
so they are my biggest uh, motivators and they give me a lot of confidence and they inspire me in a lot of ways and that's something that i have seen in the students that i teach uh, is that come what may uh, they never give up on their friends whatever happens um, friendship is very important to them and they never give up on their friends so i would like to leave you with this message that you know always uh, cherish friendship always be there for them always maintain this honesty when it comes to your relationship with your friends and uh, be kind to them and uh, just you know if even if you have one friend in your life you are never alone so all the best what helps me survive <laughs> or get through a day are the different type of friends that i have i have friends who are polar opposite to me who are exactly the same as me who are wise who are goofy who are fun loving who are adventurous who are the best silent types because as a person i'm not one emotion i go through a different emotions the whole like every moment in a day and every day is not the same for me today i might be very happy tomorrow i might be sad or a little bit low so i need someone to help me get through that particular emotion because it is so unfair to put the whole burden on one person like you might have one best friend but that best friend can't fill in all the shoes that you need for example if a best friend is not a goofy fun loving or a um, light hearted person if she is a wise type like for example when you feel a little low and you feel you need someone to just lighten up the mood then she can't do that she can't help you through that or he can't help you through that so uh, for example when you're low you need someone to talk to and some who will, who will help you through that emotion probably the goofy person can't help you with that and if you're low and you feel you need someone to just shut up and then listen to you you just want to vent out you don't need to hear any advices or a, any judgment you just need to speak and you just need someone to listen to the one who is the most talkative and helps you and keep uh, entertained in a day might not be the perfect one for you so you need someone who's silent who would just say yeah and then then what happened mhm mm so you need you need different variety of friends to help you through through one particular situation itself but probably you might expect you might want a different response from someone so don't put that burden on one person delegate your emotions <laughs> have fun Can you guess what the next lesson is about? Yes, you got it right. It is about the importance of sharing, the importance of having the right kind of friends and having the mindset, being ready to open up and share. The videos that you watched just now were my friends sharing their thoughts on friendship and sharing. Why? Because Lesson 4 is all about sharing and friendship. Having good friends you can trust, friends you can rely on, friends you can call at 3 a.m. also and be sure that they will come to help you. When I started this lesson, I told you I consider myself blessed. Yes, I'm blessed with good friends. what i did just now was share an anecdote with you i shared something that happened in my life with you our next lesson is an anecdote by sudha murthy horigallu let's have a look at the lesson let's listen to the reading by amina naurin of 12th b along with the presentation of comprehension questions by habis hasan of 12th b hot summer days remind me of my childhood in a little village There was a large banyan tree right in the middle of the village and I would spend many hours playing under it during my holidays. The tree was like a massive umbrella with its branches providing much needed shade and succor. 
travelers spend some time sitting on it and catching their breath before going on their way. To make them comfortable, there was a horigallu under the tree. Horigallu literally means a stone that can be a weight. It was a large flat stone placed horizontally over two vertical ones, thus making a stone bench on which anyone could sit and rest a while, chat with a fellow traveler and exchange news of the road. Cold water would be kept in earthen pots near the bench and people could quench their thirst before starting their journeys again. I am sure similar simple arrangements can be found in villages all over the country. What is a horigal? What is its purpose? A horigalu means a stone that can bear weight. A horigalu provides a space for anyone to sit and rest for a while, chat with a fellow traveler, and drink water from an earthen pot kept nearby. The horigalu in our village holds special memories for me as it is inextricably linked with my grandfather. He was a retired school teacher and would spend hours every day sitting under the banyan tree and talking to those resting there. When I would get tired of playing, I would sit next to him and observe the people he was speaking to and listen to their conversations. Most of them were villagers taking a break from their work in the fields nearby. They had to walk long distances each day, carrying heavy burdens on their heads. Tired out by the heat, they would drink the cool water, wash their faces with it and chat with grandfather. Their conversation would be about their daily lives and worries. What are the special memories the author associates with the Horigalu? The special memories are of her grandfather who used to chat with the travelers who were resting at the Horigalu. Master G. This summer has been so hot. I have never seen such dry weather. Or, Master G, it is getting difficult for me to carry these large loads on my head. Thank God for this Horikalu. I wish my son would help, but he only wants to go to the city. They spoke about the difficulties they lived with. My grandfather could only listen to them, but just talking to him seemed to refresh them for the journey. After some time, they would pick up their burdens with some ease and go on their way. The origallu was an important feature in their lives and as a child, I would often not understand why they blessed it so often for being there. After all, it was only a stone bench. It was my grandfather who told me, Child, a origallu is essential in any journey. We all carry our burdens according to our situations and capacities. But every once in a while, we need to stop, put down that burden and rest. Only then can we be refreshed enough to pick up the load once more. The Horigallu gives everyone that opportunity to do so. It helps people like regain their strength. How did the grandfather refresh the travelers? Grandfather refreshed the travelers by talking to them. Is Horigallu essential in journey? Why? Yes, the burdens of our life need to be put down once in a while. Only then can we be refreshed to pick up the load once again and regain the strength. Horigallu gives everyone the opportunity to regain their strength. What does the author try to indicate here? Once the burden is relieved, people may find an extra energy to pick up the load once more and go forward. Similarly, if a person gets a chance to share their worries and be relieved of them, they regain their strength to move on taking the load of life again. Later on in life, I got to see something that reminded me of that stone bench once again. I was working in Bombay. One of my colleagues, Ratna, was a senior clerk, middle-aged and always smiling. She had done her graduation and been working in the company for nearly 25 years. She went about her repetitive, mundane work with an infectious cheerfulness. Bring out the symbolic significance of the word burden. 
Burden here signifies the problems of life which are like heavy loads. Comment on expression, infectious cheerfulness. It means that such people have an ability to spread their happiness to everyone. Every day, during the lunch hour, she would sit with some person in one of the rooms and they would have long chats. I would often wonder what he talked about. One day, I finally asked her, Retna, why do you talk with each person for the whole lunch hour? Retna smiled and said simply, They share their troubles with me. But how can you solve the troubles of so many people? Do you always have an answer for them? What did Ratna do during lunch hours? She spoke with people individually and listened to their problems. No, I only listen. And that is enough that solves the problem. I was young and incredulous at such a simplistic outlook. But Retna answered with the same patience and affection that she must have used with all my colleagues. I am not a trained counsellor or an intellectual. No one can solve your problem. You have to do it yourself. Then how do you help them by listening to them? What is Retna's simplistic outlook? Retna is simple and admits that she is not a trained counsellor or an intellectual to solve anybody's problems. But she is a patient listener, enough to get people relieved of their problems. That is her simplicity. God has given me two years to listen to others. I hear them out with sympathy and without any judgment. When a person in trouble or under a lot of strain, finds an outlet for his worries, it relieves half his burden. I thought for some time and said, but don't you ever break the confidence and tell others the secrets you hear, even by mistake? Not even in my dreams. I consider that to be the worst kind of betrayal. I don't think there is a greater sin than betraying someone's confidence. They tell me their worries because they know I will never talk about or gossip about it to another person. Only when they know their words are secure with me can they talk to me freely. This way I relieve their burden for a short while till they are ready to pick themselves up and carry on with their journey. Her words uncannily echoed my grandfather's, sitting on the stone bench under the banyan tree. Perhaps, in their own small ways, without access to great wealth, both these people were doing tremendous social service. No one thought of acknowledging their work or rewarding them for it. But they continued to do so, as these acts of kindness gave them joy. If ever now I happen to pass a Horikallo in a village, I remember them and wish there were many more of them in this world. Other wished that there were many more of Horikallos in the world. Comment. She wishes that there were many more people with whom they could share their problems and get relieved. Uh, thank you, Amina, for the lovely reading, and thank you, Harbis, for the wonderful presentation of the comprehension questions. So, let's not forget that this unit is about women empowerment. The theme is how to make women stronger, more confident how to make life better for women. Now you know that every woman should have good friends too. That will definitely make her life a lot better. That will help her make the right decisions. That will give her the support she needs when she's going through a bad time. So children, let's not forget that this unit is about women empowerment. So we have to relate this lesson also to that theme. So I think this lesson is trying to tell us how important friendship, having good friends is to a woman and how every woman should feel free to share, to share her pain, to share her worries, to share her fears and to find people whom she can trust. I'll just summarize the lesson here. Here Sudha Murthy is telling us about something that happened when she was a little girl and when she was living in the village 
with her grandfather. So he, she remembers that there was a huge banyan tree which gave a lot of shade, succor and comfort uh, to the people of the village. She also remembers how there was a horigalu. You saw the picture of the horigalu. It is a stone which can bear weight. She fondly remembers how her grandfather used to sit under that banyan tree and talk to the people. And she says that by talking to the people, grandfather was also acting as a horigalu. Just like a horigalu helped the travelers to unburden themselves, help the travelers to relax, talking to the grandfather also helped the travelers to relax. I hope you understood that concept. Okay. And next to the horegalu, there were earthen pots full of water and people used to drink water and quench their thirst as well. Then the author takes us to a later time in her life where she was working in Bombay. In her off, she remembers how one, her, one of her colleagues, what was her name? Yes, one of her colleagues Ratna. She was a very cheerful person, always smiling and spreading happiness all around her. And Sudha Murthy says she noticed something really special about her. Sudha Murthy remembers that every day during lunch break, someone or the other will be sitting next to Ratna and they will be telling her their stories. So she got curious and asked Ratna, what is happening? Why is everybody coming and talking to you? So what was so special about Ratna? She used to listen to her colleagues. She was a good listener and a good friend. So every day during lunchtime, someone or the other will come to Ratna and they will sit together and have a chat where the colleague will tell Ratna what they are going through at that point of time. And Ratna knew very well that she cannot offer them any solutions. She is just a normal human being. But according to Ratna, a person can get a lot of relief from the burdens of their life just by talking about it to somebody. Ratna also added that it's very important that the person knows that he or she can trust you. Over the years, Ratna was able to build that trust among her colleagues that they could trust her with anything. And whatever they tell her, whatever they tell Ratna will remain with Ratna. Ratna would not disclose their secrets, their stories to anybody. Their secrets are safe with Ratna. Okay, okay. Now, the message of the story, the author is telling us that it is very important that we have people like grandfather and Ratna in our life. Or it is very important that we become like grandfather, we become like Ratna and listen to other people. The author concludes hoping that there are many, many more horigalus in the world. By horigalus, she means people like grandfather and Ratna. Author says that people like grandfather and Ratna are doing a big social service by being good listeners and helping others to unburden their tensions, their problems, their, wor their worries, their fears, their sadness, their pain. So it's a huge social service. You're really helping somebody else by just listening to them. I hope you enjoyed this uh, anecdote by Sudha Murthy. And I hope all the concepts are clear. If at all you have any more doubts, you can text me personally. Bye.